Tawati to Lila, the previous class. So, uh, we, we learned about the latches and then flip flops, right? So, and actually, in the, in the previous class, we focused on the behavior, behavior root, the latches, and the flip flops. So, what is it different? Latches and flip flops. So, so you need to understand the difference between latches and then flip flops. Okay. So, latches, level sensitive. Okay. So, in the D latch, so we can control the behavior with the latch using a clock signal, right? But this control signal is level sensitive. So, which means that we just check the, the clock signal is one or not. Okay. So if the clock signal is one, then the display latch is transparent. So which means that the input input is reflected to output. Okay. So input is just passed through to output values. Also, so what is then what is deep flip flop? Deep flip flop actually the port is the same. So as I mentioned, the so deep flip flop has also clock signal. Okay, so also we can control the behavior of this deep flip flop using clock signal. Okay, but deep flip, deep flip flop is edge sensitive. Okay, so which means that on the rising edge of a clock, then the deep flip flop becomes transparent, right? So it means the output, the output is just updated by input signals only. On the rising edge of the clock. Okay. Otherwise, the deep flip flop can just hold the previous values. Okay. So it can work like memory. Okay. So, so it, you know, so this uh this waveform, this waveform is a, is a, it's a very important. So you need to understand the behavior. So so important. <laughs> I mentioned how this is important, so it means that it can be uh, asked during the uh, final exam, right? Okay, so uh, we learned how to implement latches and then flip flops, right? Also, so you know, actually, we we frequently we frequently use deep flip flops in this uh, system design, right? So we need to remember, <clears throat> need to remember how to implement deep flip flop. So it will be frequently used. Okay. So you can just focus on the this sensitivity list of deep flip flops, right? So I mentioned that the deep flip flop is edge sensitive. So the sensitive sensitivity list includes edge, edge of clock signal. Okay, the edge of clock signal. So you can find the positive edge of a clock signal. So it means that the positive edge is the rising edge. So on the rising edge of the clock, then the, this always already statement will be executed. Okay. So you can understand how to implement it. Okay, we learned about the uh, registers, then also enable the deep flip flop. Okay. So you need to remember that actually, uh, if we use the, it's, it's, so it's very important. If we implement combinational logic, then we need to define all possible cases for input. So like the so all possible cases for this conditional statement, like if else statement or case statement. So we need to define all possible cases, input cases. But if we just implement the deep flip flops, we can just implement the, some some part of uh, input cases. So for example, in this example, the, this deep flip flop has enable signal, right? But we just define the so if the enable is one, then Q becomes D, right? And then S is not defined here. So because the S is else, 
is equal to q is becomes q. Okay. So, but we don't need to because you know, um, in the deeply block, so except the rising edge of the clock, deeply block just holds the previous value, right? So, and then also if you see that this always statement, the always statement will be executed only on the rising edge of the clock, right? So we don't need to define this the this other case like the memory state of a different block. So that's why we do not define uh, this statement. You can define this state also in the different block, but you don't need to. Okay. Okay. Let's see the another type of different blocks. So it's a kind of resetable flip flop. So. So we learned about the reset signal, right? What is the reset? Reset makes output zero, right? So that is the uh, meaning of reset. So if you see the input port of this resetable flip flop, then you can find that this deep flip flop includes the reset input. So we can just expect the behavior of this resetable deep flip flop, right? So resetable deep flip flop. So it means if the reset signal is one, then output will become zero, obviously, right? So as I mentioned that the reset makes output zero. Okay. So if the reset is one, then Q is forced to zero, it's a reset, right? So reset is a zero, it's the normal, it's a normal flip flop. So is this resetable flip flops uh, works like the no more deep flip flop. So if the reset is zero, so you can find the symbol of this resetable uh, deep flip flop. Okay, so this is the clock port, and then this is the reset port. Okay, if the reset is given, then the reset is one, then the output will be zero. So why? What? Why? So actually, so we also frequently use this resetable fully flat in the digital system. Why? So, so in the system, so I mentioned that when you build a certain system, then this system needs to be stable. Okay? So what is what is the meaning of stable? Stable of stability of a system. So stable means that we can, so this system exhibits, this system shows the determined, deterministic output always. Do you know? So, so if we cannot expect the output of the system, then we can, we can say that, oh, this system is unstable, right? So if, if we cannot expect uh, some real output of the system, then we can say that, oh, this system is unstable because we cannot expect any output, right? So stable system is the same. So for the, the, like the other systems, such as the so social systems or some, some, some data systems, so it includes the, uh, is the system. So if the, if the system is stable, then we can expect, we can expect the output. Outputs of book systems. Okay? But, deep flip flop. It's a clock, and then this is D, and then this is Q. So, this deep flip flop actually holds the previous value. So, it accepts the rising edge of the clock. So, what does that mean? In the initial state, so we need to focus on the initial state of the deep flip flop. Okay. So when we simulate, when, when we simulate system value design, then I mentioned that the actually initially the signal value is unknown. So that's why in the in the waveform we can observe the on here. It's x x for the some signals because initially we don't know. So if we just turn on the system or the computer system, like this the system actually 
we don't know. We don't know the output values. We don't know the state of this system. But it means that the system becomes unstable. So we need to avoid this case, right? Because actually, we don't know the initial initial value of the <clears throat> this equilibrium, right? So we need to initialize. We need to initialize the the output, the output of the this deep flip flop, right? So as I mentioned, so initially we don't know, we don't know the state, but we need to avoid the, this case. That's why we require recess signal. So, <clears throat> so if you see the some very uh, the, if you see the sequential logic like the some normal digital system, then you can find the reset port always okay so if we reset the system then the system is reset and it means the the state is initialized so for this purpose we require receptable flip flop <clears throat> and then you can define you, you can expect the, this re, the behavior of a receptable flip flop like this you say this is one and then Q becomes zero, otherwise it's no more peripheral. Okay. Uh, we can define two different types of recess signal. It's just synchronous and asynchronous. So you need to also understand the, the terminology synchronous and asynchronous. What is the synchronous? Uh, in Korean, it is called Dongi Hwa, right? Synchronous. So what, what does that mean? So think about the uh, uh, synchronizing, like the uh, kind of swimming. Uh, right, what is that? <laughs> so it's a kind of swimming in Olympic. So what is the synchronizing? So synchronizing means that the, 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 the behavior of these two people, the two people is, is just the same, right? Actually, the, the, the original meaning of synchronizing or synchronize, you know, uh, it, it means the actually the two behavior is the same. Okay, two behavior of two different objects or two different people uh, is the same, then you can say, oh, this is synchronized. But in the digital system, the synchronous was synchronizing is it it has the different meaning. Okay, so just just uh, do not be confused with the, the original mean original meaning of synchronize. Okay, so okay actually in the in the digital system, the synchronous was synchronizing is it has the different meaning. So then what is the synchronous? So if you see the, the synchronous, so we, we, we so I mentioned that the receptable flip flops has two different types. So for the reset signal, for instance, the first type is the synchronous reset. So you, if you read the, this sentence, then you can find that resets at the flat edge only. What does that mean? Recess signal is reflected to the output only on the rising edge of the clock. Okay? And then it is called the synchronous reset. So based on the, this sentence, then we can just expect the meaning of synchronous. Actually, in the, in the digital system, synchronous means that the output, output behavior are updated by clock. Okay. So in a deep flip flop, the output is update, only updated on the rising edge of the clock. So we can say that oh this output is synchronous with clock signal. 
Okay, so it is different. So it, it does not represent or oh, output signal is the same to the plug signal, right? You do not be confused. So if we just say synchronous or synchronized in this the system, it means that the output signal is reflected only on the rising edge or negative edge, like the holding edge of a clock. So output behavior is determined, determined by edges of a clock. Okay? Then we can say that this signal is the synchronous signal. Okay, you can understand the synchronous or, or synchronous like this. Okay, so it's it's very important, right? Then what is asynchronous? Asynchronous is a, the opposite meaning. So asynchronous it means that the the reset signal, the reset signal is not synchronized. Okay, synchronized with the clock. So it, it means that. This set is immediately reflected, okay? Regardless of clock signal, okay? It is called asynchronous, okay? So you need to understand the synchronous or asynchronous in digital system. Okay, so asynchronous, so there are two types of reset signal, synchronous, which means that the reset is reflected only the rising edge of a clock. Okay, clock edges of clock, uh, uh, edges of clock. A synchronous reset will be immediately reflected. So it means that if the reset signal becomes one, then output will be zero immediately. Okay, but if for the synchronous reset, if the reset signal becomes one on the rising edge of the clock then output will be zero, okay? It's a different, okay? So there are two types of uh, the reset signal. So, but we frequently use the this asynchronous reset, okay? Asynchronous reset, the reset double flip. But we need to distinguish the difference of uh, synchronous reset and then asynchronous reset, okay? Actually, we can implement the, uh, the synchronous reset signal, reset flip flop like this, okay? Because the reset is also synchronized, then this, uh, this reset is used for uh, making the input zero. But so we can add, use the AND gate to, to make the input zero. So, and then also you can find the reset bar here. So if, which mistake the reset is a one, then one of the input of this end gate is zero, then output is already zero. And then this zero is given to the input of the flip flop, so it becomes zero. So this is the synchronous uh, <coughs> resetable flip flop. So for the asynchronous resetable flip flop, then we need to modify the design of this flip flop. Okay? But we frequently use the, this one. Okay, so let's see the, the example of deep flip flop with asynchronous reset. So in, so in the digital system, so you need to understand synchronous, asynchronous. So I also uh, frequently say, oh, this is asynchronous reset or synchronous reset. Okay, so you need to understand. So we, so this is the example, and then also we need to use the array of the backup because we need to implement the flip flop using the, this already statement. Okay, so you can find the clock signal and the reset signal here. So these are control input of flip flop and then input and output. So what can you observe? So you can see. So this is the sensitivity risk. It positive edge clock or negative edge reset. So this is the actually negative reset. So sometimes, sometimes we can use the negative signal. So the meaning of, so actually 
So we mentioned that if the certain signal is one, then we can say, oh, this is true. And then if the A is zero, then this is false. Okay. But sometimes we need to use the negative signal. So negative signal means that so it's a kind of A on the bar N. It means the negative. So if the A on the bar N is one, it means false. Then if the A on the bar N is zero, then it means true. So this is the negative signal. Okay, so sometimes we need to we need to use the negative signal. Okay, so this example shows the negative reset. Okay, so which means if the reset signal is zero, then it means it's the reset is true. Okay, and then if the reset signal is one, then it means it is the normal state because the reset is false. Okay, so you also you need to understand the negative signal. Okay, so so in this example, so I use the negative reset, mm -hmm. asynchronous reset. Okay, <clears throat> so if we use the the negative reset and uh, asynchronous negative reset, then we need to add the negative reset. Okay. And then, so if you see the inside of this already statement, you, you can observe that if the reset is zero, right? So you can find the not signal here. So it, it means that if the, so it's a tilde reset, so it means the reset bar, okay? Because the reset bar is true, so it means that the reset is zero. So if the reset is zero, then Q becomes zero. Otherwise, it's the S, otherwise, then it's the normal flip flop. Q becomes D. So we need to implement this asynchronous negative reset like this. Okay. So firstly, we need to add the negative edge of reset. Negative edge of reset in the sensitivity risk. And then we need to define the behavior of flip flop by this reset signal. And then because this is the negative reset, I use the negative reset, and then tilde, the bar of reset. Okay, so then why do we need to use the negative reset in a circuit? This is the circuit. So why, why, why? Why do, we, why do I show the example of negative reset? Because we frequently use negative reset for real business system. Then why? So it is, be, <clears throat> it is because, so you can find the reset button on, on your computer. But that, so actually the meaning is different, but actually, so, Digital system as the reset port. Okay? Reset port. But when the uh, when the, when we turn off, so if the digital system is turned off, right? It's a turn, if we turn off a certain uh, digital system, then actually we can say that uh, this all inputs becomes zero. Okay. So in the in, in the turn of turn of state, then it means that the input signals become zero, right? And then I mentioned that we we want your stable system, but the device can be unstable when it turn on the power of the this system, right? If to be <coughs> So if we turn on of the system, <coughs> the electric power is not provided to the system. So actually we don't know. So it's a, it's a turn, of, it's a turn of state, but we, we don't know the initial state. But when we turn on the system, then the electric power is provided, then system will work. But this, this time, if we turn on 
then reset is we, we think that reset is initially zero. So actually the system becomes the reset state. Okay, that's why we use negative reset. Okay. So as I mentioned, if the device is a turn off state, then all inputs are zero, low, low level signal. And then we turn on, then signals will be changed. But at this time, this signal is zero. So the system will start from reset state, initialized state, the stable. Okay, that's why we use the negative reset signal. Okay. So if we use the positive reset, so it's a normal reset, then so, okay. Then we can change the this as the this as the pipe pass as it, and then we can just remove the tilde. Okay. But we frequently use the negative reset signal. Okay. So you need to understand this. So the in the in the sensitive list, we need to add the, this condition. So many of them. Then, then how can you how can you deal with the synchronous reset? So in the in the synchronous reset, so if we use the synchronous reset, then the output. The, the output of a flip flop is reflected only on the rising edge of a clock. Okay, so we said it's the same. So in order to implement the synchronous reset, then we just remove the this sensitivity list condition. Okay, then this already statement will be executed only on the rising edge of the clock, right? Then we can use the same statement, right? So if you, uh, on, if you explain the this statement, then what for? Positive edge of clock only. Then this always statement will be executed, right? Then we check the reset signal. Okay. Or oh, if the reset is zero, then up becomes zero. Otherwise, no more state. Okay, so for the synchronous reset, we can just remove the this condition. Okay, but if we use the uh, asynchronous reset, then we need to add the, this condition in the sensitivity list. Okay, so so based on the sensitivity list, then different type of Types of flip flops can be implemented. Okay. Okay, so another type is the terrible, uh, terrible flip flop. So it has the set signal. So we can also expect the behavior. If the set is one, then out becomes one. Okay. Okay, so this, so we just to learn about the different types of flip flop. Okay, then let's learn about the synchronous sequential logic. Then also let's learn why why we why we use sequential logic for the norm the, the for most digital systems. Okay. Okay. So actually, so we can say that the sequential circuit. So if the we, if uh, so, uh, so the circuit uh, includes the sequential logic, then we can say that oh, this is the sequential circuit. Okay, so for example, if a certain circuit includes the latches or flip flops, or usually uh, these circuits include the flip flops, then we can say that oh, these circuits are sequential circuits, right? Then why do we need to use the sequential logic? Sequential logic in the is the system. So actually, even though this is the definition of a sequential circuit, 
but I mentioned that if a certain circuit includes latches or flip flops, but I said that if we implement the latches, then it is just it can be bug. So usually, okay. So it means that actually our digital system, our sequential digital system, will include flip flops. Okay. Then flip flop. Flip-flops are synchronous. With what? Clock, right? Flip-flops are synchronous with the clock signal. And then I also explain the meaning of it, synchronous. What's the meaning? On the rising edge of the clock, or also negative edge is possible, on the edges of the clock, then output. Output is just updated. Okay? That is the meaning of synchronous. So actually, the sequential circuit, if we just mention sequential circuit, actually, this is the original meaning. Also, it's the art combination. So it means, it means that a uh, certain circuit includes the uh, sequential logic, then we can say that, oh, this is the sequential circuit. But, so this is the original meaning, but actually, actually, but the so practical meaning is that sequential circuits include flip flops. Okay, then why, why do we build sequential circuits? It is because we want build stable system. Okay. Okay. So everyone wants everyone wants to build stable system. Okay. So stable system means that so we can expect we can expect the a certain output or we can expect the behavior. But so it means that at certain time at us at a certain time. Okay. So the behavior of sequential circuits are controlled by clock edges. Okay, so which means that we can control the time, the timing of output of this system using clock signals. Okay, so which means that we can build, we can build stable, most stable systems using sequential circuits. So think about this. So this is the kind of combination of logic. Okay, so this is the A, B, and then output. Okay. So and then I mentioned that this this logic, so basic logics includes also the exhibit delay. Okay, delta t, delta t delay, delta t one, delta t two. But when we learned about the uh, delays of combination analysis, we just define two different types of delays. What are they? Propagation delay and contamination delays, right? So maximum delay and minimum delay. That I mentioned that actually the real delay, real delay of this circuit is between the contamination delay, the TCD, and then Propagation delay. So this is the maximum delay. This is the minimum delay. So we can observe a certain delay of circuit between this delay time. What does it mean? Actually, we don't know. We don't know the exact timing of this circuit. Which means we don't know when the output of this circuit is determined. Actually, because we just define two different types of delay minimum delay and maximum delay, and then the actual delay is between these delays, right? So, which means we don't know, we don't know when the circuit values are stabilized, determined. Okay, you understand? So actually, the delays of the circuit is influenced by many factors, such as the inputs 
and then the processing variation, temperature, and then also the wear out, wear out of the circuits. So like the clothes, the circuits are also worn out. I got it, circuit. Anyway, the, uh, the, delay, the delay of the circuit is influenced by uh, our circuit are influenced by many factors, right? So actually we don't know. We don't know the exact timing of this combination of large. So which means if, if if we can build if we we can build the uh, this the system using the this the circuit so combination logic, but we don't know when the output is generated and the outputs are determined and the system is unstable because we cannot expect the the value, the output of this system, okay? So, then, if we just add, like, uh, this same uh, combination analogy, and then we just add the flip-flop, and then the Q, so, and then the so clock signal is the periodic signal, okay? It's a clock. So if you see that this circuit, then the output, the output of this circuit is the actually the output of flip flop. Then if we use the this flip flop, actually the output is updated, is generated on the rising edge of the clock only, right? So which means, oh, we don't know. We don't know delay. We, we don't know the exact delay of this combination of it. But if we just add the deep flip flop the up, for the upper port of the combination logic, then we can control. We can know when the output signal is generated. It's a reflected. Right. So which means we can expect, we can expect the when the output signals are generated, which means it's stable, stable system. Okay? That's why we use the sequential logic. Sequential logic for building normal, the most digital systems. Okay? So this is the, another example. So you can find the three uh, back to back inverters okay so three back to back inverters are connected like this and then also the output of a g inverter is feedback to the input of x in that inverter okay so there is no input but also we can just uh, observe the some oscillation oscillation of the circuit actually so so you can find the oscillation here then but Actually, this oscillate the pure. So actually, we can. So this, this. So you can find that. Oh, this signal is very similar to the clock signal, right? It's a periodic signal. So actually, we can we can generate clock signal using this serially connected inverters. Okay, actually. So that's possible. Okay, but what's the problem? So oh. We can we can build the uh, uh, some a certain signal like this, but delay. We, we don't know the exact delay, right? So actually, we cannot we cannot estimate the, the exact period of this circuit. Okay. So if, if we cannot expect the, a certain output of the circuit then that is an unstable system okay so this is the, also another example of the problem of combinational analysis okay so we, we just build a, a certain system like the oscillator using only the combinational analysis 
Bhakti is it unstable. So we cannot expect the, some real output of this system. Okay. So, so this is the, some kind of rules for designing sequential circuits or sequential design. Okay. So actually, so as I mentioned, the output, the output of combination logic is output of combination logic of uh, exhibitor some the default delay, delay time, then we need to avoid this case. So actually, so we can just add uh, some <coughs> flip blocks, flip blocks to the output of combinational logic. Okay. So because we can just add the multiple flip blocks, then so in, we can, if you read the uh, this slide, you can find the registers. Okay. So we can just add the registers or multiple flips, flip flops in the out in the output of a certain combination logic. Okay. Then the output, the output is synchronized. The output signal of this system will be synchronized. Okay. Then we can uh, build uh, some <coughs> stable, <coughs> stable uh, Sequential logic. Okay. Okay. So, so there are two common synchronous. So, so you can find the, the terminology synchronous, but okay, but you, then you can find you can understand the oh, synchronous logic. Oh, then so this is the system use class, you know, and then this is the system includes the flip flops. Okay, synchronous. So two common synchronous sequential circuit. Okay, so we can we can observe two common uh, synchronous sequential circuits uh, like the uh, finite state machine FSM and pipelines. So so actually we will learn about the pipelines the computer architecture course. Okay, so actually, but in order to understand the pipelining then you also need to understand the behavior of deep flip flops. Okay. So also actually in this course we will learn about the finite state machine like FSM. So but actually the, the behavior is very similar. Okay. But uh, so if you understand the, uh, the behavior of deep flip flops, then I believe you can understand the a finite state machine also. So, and then about the pipelining, then we will learn about the pipelines in the computer architecture course. Okay. okay. So, so actually, so we can give the so some sequential logic like these two forms. Okay. So, what can you observe? So this is the first form, and then this is the second form. So actually, in this figure, you can find the state element one and two. And so here, left side the figure. But this state one element is actually deep flip flop. This is also deep flip flop. Then what can you observe? So you can observe that also this is the combination of it, so CL. So what can you observe? So in this figure, the left side figure, then you can find that the input, input of a combination logic is the output of a deep flip flop. So what does that mean? At the winding edge of a clock, then output, output of this deep flip flop is updated on the, the on the rising edge of a clock. So which means at this time input input signals for this combination logic will be updated. So it's a stabilized. So the signals will 
start at this time. Okay. So input values are just determined at this time, okay? rising edge of flat. Then this input is given to the combination, combination logic. So during this period, clock period, the inputs of this combination logic is fixed, right? So it updates only at this time, and then the these, these values are maintained step, right? So same input values are given to the this combination logic. Understand? Then how about the output? The output will be also stabilized after some delay, okay, delta t. So delta t is the delay of the combination logic. So input is stabilized at this point, the output will be stabilized after a certain delay, okay, like here. So I mentioned that this is hardware, then the hard, every hardware exhibit the delay. So 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 input signal is stabilized at this time, and then after some time, the then output of this combinator logic will be stabilized. So it, it will be determined. Then this output is also sampled by another duplicate. Also, rising edge. So, what does that mean? Even though we don't know the, the output, output timing, we, we cannot expect the real output timing of the, this circuit, but because of this flip flop, we can just sample the, this output. But this output needs to be stabilized before the, this rising edge of a clock. Okay? Then, we can just sample the stabilized output, then this output will be also provided to the another combination logic at the, at the rising edge of the clock. So, by using flip-flops, we can control. We can control the timing. Timing for input signals to Combination analysis. And then also output signals are sampled by heap flip flop, so which means that we can also control the timing of this output, this output of this system. Okay? So we can so we can build up some some digital logic like this. So which means there are two flip-flops, two, two, two pair, pair of flip-flops, flip-flops for input and then flip-flops for output. And then between these flip-flops, there is combinational logic. Okay, so we can build up this the system like this. And then this is another type, but actually it's the same because the combinational combination logic is feedback to the is deep flip flop, right? So output is feedback to the input of this deep flip flop. This is possible because the output is synchronized by clock signal. Okay. So actually, this output becomes the input of combination logic for the next clock cycle. Okay. So just to remember the this. Uh, this figure, okay? We can, you can actually, we can build the distance system, but this distance system includes the flip flops and combination analysis. Okay, so we use flip flops to make the synchronous signals, okay? So signals are synchronized with clock signals, and then we can use combination logic to generate the, the a certain output. So we learned about the Boolean equation, right? We can be, we can implement the, this Boolean equation or Boolean equation using combination analysis, right? Okay. 
So which means that we can make any any uh, equation or any any logic using combinational logic. Then between the we just add the flip flops on the on the input part and then output both of the flip flop are uh, combinational logic. Then we can control the timing timing of signals using flip flops. Okay. So we can just build up this the logic what is the system like this. Okay. Okay, please read the textbook. Okay, so not this one. <laughs> okay, so then let's learn about the FSM. Hmm. So so I mentioned that the FSM is the as a kind of sequential logic. So actually, we I uh, introduced introduced about uh, some two representative sequential logic, so FSMs and pipelines. So I mentioned that we will learn about the pipelining in the, the computer architecture course. So then we will learn about the finite state machine. So I think this is kind of new terminology. Okay, so finite state machine. So what is the finite state machine? So actually, you can find it's just finite. So it's demonstrate if it's not infinite, then state. State is just state. So you can understand that oh, it's a state, right? And then machine. Machine is a machine. So actually, it's kind of a state machine. So what does that mean? Okay, the same example. State of memory. So state means that actually we, we can just uh, observe some many different states in, in the nature. In the nature, right? So actually this this figure shows the, the three states of matter, right? So solid, liquid, and gas, right? But why do we need to define state? Because so as I mentioned. <laughs> Actually, the output, the output is determined by this current state and plus input. So based on the current state, and then if a certain input is given, then the default state is determined, right? So, so this is the kind of some some systems, systems in nature, in the nature, right? Actually, we can define, like the, this state of matter, state of matter, we can define the behavior of the systems using multiple states. For example, so like the so smartphone, smartphone, so, Maybe we can define the default more um default modes like the so kind of performance mode, kind of the power balancing mode, or the hibernation mode. So, <laughs> so the base so we can define the default states for those systems also. So like the, this state of matter, state of nature, then we can also define states to build a certain kind of systems, right? So in order to so in order to define some define the, the different behavior, behavior of a certain systems, we can define some multiple different states so like the, this this example. So in order to define the behavior of matter, we can define three different states like solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, and then we just explain the, the behavior of this system, right? It's the same. When we build a certain this the systems, we can define different states, right? Like, and then based on the input, based on the input signals, so the states can be changing. We can also define the this change it based on the input signal. So by doing this, we can 
define behavior or group of system, right? Okay. So let's see the another example. So, so this is the uh, traffic light system. It's a kind of a traffic light system. So working with sensors. Okay. So so in this example, so we have the uh, two different uh, traffic sensors. Let's see. For the whole, the traffic sensors, uh, traffic light, <laughs> traffic light, for the is the horizontal uh, traffic, then also traffic light for the vertical traffic. Okay. So because this is the example from the United States, the United States does not, the, in, in the United States, we cannot find any uh, electrical signal <laughs> normally, normally. So, so, so we can define the, the traffic light. And then also let us also that this traffic light can be changed by sensors. So, and then the sensors just detect the traffic. So like the vertical traffic and then horizontal traffic. Okay. So then what is the state? What is the state of this system? So this is also a system, right? So what is the state? So state, we can define the state such as the O. So there are two lines, like uh, LA. LA is the, so it's, it's a traffic sign for the horizontal traffic. And then LB is the, for the vertical traffic, the traffic sign. Okay, so kind of, so and then also we already know that so traffic sign has a lot red, yellow, and then green signals, like red, yellow, green signals. So based on the, these signals, so like output, then we can define states, right? Like the, oh, this is green, LA is green, then uh, LB needs to be red. So if you agree, then it's, it's unstable, right? So we can just state, Define the state. State of this traffic light like this. But these states are changed by traffic sensors. Okay, these are inputs. So we can define so like the O. Oh, so green, LA is green, and then LB is red. And then the other input is given, then it can be changed to. L is yellow, and then L is still red. Okay, and then sort of input is given, then L A is green, uh, not, not, not red, L B is green, something like that. So we define states, different states, and then based on the input, then we define the change of states. So it changes our states. Also define the behavior, behavior of like the outputs of this system, right? So we can define, we can build uh, certain systems using multiple states and then state transition based on the inputs. Okay, so FS, with the FSM, then we can also build up a certain system. Okay, so Using uh, sequential logic, like the deep relief labs, we can build FSM, the finite state machine, okay? So, FSM consists of state register, and, and then combinational logic. So state register is just kind of multiple relief labs, okay? And then, so actually, the state to register defines the states. Okay. So, and so this is the example of state to register. And then you can find that oh, this is clock because it's a deeply block. And then, input of deeply block is the next state. And then, output is the 
Okay, so first the next step, product state. So it's the state zero, and then it's a state one, and then if the if the we can say that oh current state is state zero, but next state, then the state will be changed to the state one, then we can say that oh next state is the state one. So we can find the state transition here. Okay. So, so in the, in the state register and state register, the output of state register is the current state, then input is the next state. And then it's synchronized with the clock. So we can know that on the rising edge of the clock, on the rising edge of the clock, the current state will be will reflect the current state will be changed to the next state. So which means that this transition, this state transition, like the current to the next state, this state transition will occur on the rising edge of the clock. Obviously, the next state is given to the this deep blue block, then the current state will be updated on the rising edge of the clock. Okay? So otherwise, the, this state register just hold the current state. Okay? But on the rising edge of the clock, then the state is changed. This is, it's called the state transition. So, then it changes to the next state. Okay, load the next state at clock edge. Then the so FSM also includes the combination music. So it is because we need to clear the we need to uh we need to build up the next state last. So it means that so based on the, the current state. We need to build the signals for next state. Okay, so we can just uh, define the next state using Boolean equation, right? Based on the uh, current state and then input signals, then we can define the next state, which means we can build uh, this state transition using Boolean equations. So, which means we we, we, we can build the combination of logs for determining next state. Okay, so that's why the FSM is FSM is composed of store register, uh, state register, okay, like here, state register and combination analysis. Also, based on the state, we can make the, the output. So the outputs are also generated by combination of LAS. Okay, so FSM includes the state register and combination LAS here and here. So, and then there are two types of FSM, okay? So, like the more FSM and then milli FSM. Actually, so, if you see the state transition, like the S, S zero and then S1 and the state can be changed like this. Okay. So actually this state transition is determined by current state and input. So for example, so like so what is the current state and input? So in this example the current state is the solid current state is solid state and then input is kind of heat. Heat plus what heat minus. Okay. So heat is heat is added, then it goes, it then goes to the oh, liquid, <laughs> solid. But if the heat is the high heat, so it's a kind of a very high energy is given, it can directly can go to the gas. Okay. So it's a thing. In the FSM, the state can be changed. So, but we, the, we, 
based on the current state and then the input signal, then the next state is determined. So for example, oh, current state is at zero, and then if the certain input, if the A is one, then it goes to the S1, or if the A is zero, then the next state is still S0, something like this. So next state. Next state will be determined by the current state and input signals. So it's common for the FSMs. But there are two types, like the more FSM and the million FSM. Okay? In the more FSM, the outputs depend only on current state. So which means the output signal is determined by only current state. So like the oh if the S0 is if the current state is S0, then output is zero. If the current state is S1, then output is zero. I want so, in this example, the output signal, output value is just determined by current state. Because I said that if current state up some up, then output is one. Okay. So, if this type of FSM is called the more FSM, but we can also define the milli FSM. The milli FSM represents that. The output depends on outputs depend on current state and inputs. Okay, so which means the output is also determined by current state and input. For example, oh, current state is at zero. Then if a is one, then output is zero. And then if A is zero, then output is one. Okay. So I said that current state and if a certain input, then output is some output has some values. So this type of FSM is called the milli FSM. Okay. So you can define. So there are two types, two different types. Work the output values are just determined by current state and then really the output values are determined by me, are determined by current state and input values. So we can just see the some different um, type of the like the some different structure of more FSM and then milli FSM. Okay, so you press this. This is the state register. And then you can find that the next state is the input of state register. And then this state, so this is actually current state. Okay, so this is the current state. So output of state register is the current state. So what is this one? It's the next state logic. So this next state logic is the combination logic, right? And then it, if you see the next state logic, the next state logic receives the input and the current state is a feedback to the net input of next state logic. So it also receives the current state, right? Each equivalent to the next state determined by current state and inputs. Because current state and inputs are input signals for next state logic. And then next state will be determined by this logic. Okay? Then how output? Output, so if you see the output logic, the output logic just receives 
state, the call state only. So, and then it does not receive any input. Okay, so this is the, so this is more. Because output is just determined by current state. Okay, understand? How about the milli? Milli is the same for the next state logic. So next state logic also receive the current state and input. Difference is that output logic is here. Output logic is also combinational logic. Output logic receives current state and input values. Actually, You know, this part is the same, right? So the state register up, the, the next state is determined by inputs and current state. But for the milli up logic, up logic receives the input and current state. So we can if we can compare the, the default structure of more FSM and milli FSM. Okay. Okay, so, so this slide shows how to design FSM. So, so we will learn how to design FSM in the next class. Okay, so I'll stop here. Any questions? Thank you for your attention. See you in the next class.